This is a disassembly and review video of a broken O'Keefe wireless earbuds uh, originally purchased in Canada from Amazon for about $49. This is kind of a generic um, earbud set that I had trouble with after uh, about 18 months. Um, as you can see, this is a very generic uh, uh, earbud charger. It was relatively cheap. It has a case that has a built-in battery that will then charge up the two earbuds um, supposedly the case can store 40 hours of battery life and each earbud has about eight hours per charge um, it also charges both through usb-c as well as through the uh, key wireless charging standard and um, it was working fine i only used this about a half dozen times but uh, after a good long period in storage it just would not show, uh, charge up again. The display light was uh, all blacked out. This part shows the disassembly of the um, case itself. Now, you can see that there's a light there, but this is the repaired case. So I'm re-disassembling -dis it just to demonstrate. Um, you have to use a pry tool, get in through the edges, the USB side is easier. There's two clips in the front, two clips in the back, so you have to pry it open. Because it's being disassembled, there was a lot of double-sided tape in there that has already been removed and loosened. That's why it so looks fairly easy, but the first time around, it was uh, pretty uh, hard to, and it took a little bit of pressure to wedge it out. Um, the lithium polymer battery is on the right side, so just be careful when you're shoving things in there that's nothing sharp. You don't want to be puncturing any lithium ion batteries. And as you can see, you just kind of use pry tools moving all around and wiggling until you can pull it off. Now, once it's off, you got to be careful because the key wireless charging coils are actually double sided taped to the bottom of this case itself. So you open up a little bit, and although you can't see it very well, there's copper wires coiled at the bottom. So take your pry tool and just kind of wiggle it gently off the double-sided tape to try and minimize the damage. Now, this is not the original double-sided tape. This is, uh, like I said, the reassembled version I had, uh, but essentially it's in that location. I'm just uh, repositioning the tape before I reassemble. Now, I'm just demonstrating here, there's a fairly large piece of double-sided tape there, two short pieces there, two short pieces there of double-sided tape. Even without the double-sided tape, this will kind of like hold together. The lithium polymer battery is, was also taped to the case itself, as is the co coil, as you can see. Once it's clipped in, honestly, if you're not shaking it around, bring it around, it'll be okay. The battery inside is a lithium polymer battery, um, JYZ brand, 3.7 volts, 500 milliamp hours. These are some pictures I took of the motherboard on both sides. Um, you can see that these are the charging pins, the connection. The lithium polymer battery seems to have a temperature uh, sensor, uh, so that's pretty good. Unfortunately, there are no markings that I could see on any of these chips, so um, I couldn't tell which uh, kind of like uh, brands that the um, logic and charging ICs were from. You can see it looks like it's been not printed or rubbed off. Um, I, here I started testing how much volts was actually going through the system. And you can see without a charge cable, there was no um, voltage detected at the battery uh, terminals. Um, on the upper left, I also show some of the costs for replacement batteries you get them about 10 to 20 dollars um uh, off amazon uh, if you get from aliexpress you can get it for about 624. here i demonstrate that if i um use a usb c plugged in you get about 0.6 volts if i use this wireless uh, key charger plugged in i also get 0.6 volts at the charge uh, battery connector terminals Unplugged, there was no voltage. Here, I demonstrate that if you plug in the USB-C, even with this dead battery, I'm still getting 0.8 volts going across the charging 
um, terminals to the ear pods, ear buds. So I'm not sure what's going on, but I can say that I suspect that what happens is if you leave the uh, battery uncharged for a long period of time, it discharges to the point where either the uh, logic IC for the charger circuit fails or the protection circuit on the lithium polymer battery uh, puts in protection mode. So here I am disassembling the motherboard off the um, casing. It's held into just by two screws. Now, when you place this back on, just be careful because those charge pins for the ear, uh, air, earbuds uh, poke through on the other side. You have to make sure that they're lined properly uh, before um, reassembling and clipping your thingy back in. That copper char uh, wireless charging coil is just double-sided tape there. So it's double-sided tape both to the um, motherboard slash casing on the top as well as to the casing on the bottom. So be careful when you're disassembling it, otherwise you'll tear off these fairly thin wires. Here I am taking the motherboard and the charging circuit off. And you can see that the, um, the, there's some display there. I forgot to mention that the, I believe that the pop battery is also, also held down with a little bit of, a, originally with some uh, hot glue. So here I am just showing again that the charge circuits only allows 0.8 volts through. This should not be enough to charge the ear buds. So, and, and uh, it's kind of like a failed circuit of some sort. At this point, I uh, decide that I'm going to try and uh, just test voltages from different circuits, see if I can find out if there's some shorted resistors or, um, you know, um, just kind of like playing around with the board itself. As you can say, see, there's no um, numbers, no lights on display. It's basically a dead board. You gotta remember most circuits uh, run between 3.3 and 5 volts on these kind of like microcontroller processors. Um, coming from USB-C, you can get higher voltage by the game. This, um, I think it's running on the old, older USB standards. And here I am just kind of playing around, checking voltages. Yep, the battery terminals only show 0.6, even when plugged in. So only 0.6 volts is going through the battery terminal. And that was the, uh, battery temperature sensor that I've moved out of the way there. You can see there's two, um, that it's, it's very thin wire that is right beside the battery. So I do this for a while and, uh, I don't, won't bore you about all the little voltages I'm testing, but here I am starting to test the voltages probing the chips and this chip, you can see when I start probing this chip, there you go. The light goes on right there. You can see it reflected off the paper. I didn't even notice this, but somehow as I was probing this chip, as I reset the board, I reset the board, allowing the, the display light to turn on and this bar, board was already charging at this point. Now I, I continued to probe around for a while, not realizing that the board had reset already. And I, uh, did this for a few more minutes. I won't bore you too long with that. And then I flipped it over and saw the display. And this is where I realized that, oh wow, everything seems to be running again. Pretty excited about that. I was worried that the battery itself was gonna get hot and or that the battery had failed because it kind of looks round and bulgy. But if you look at the pictures online, these, the lithium polymer battery for this type also looks kind of like roundish and bulgy. So I don't think it's actually expanded. So after uh, testing everything and uh, uh, reassemble it, so you just kind of can clip it back in, just push it down. I did not put any more double-sided tape on the sides just to make future disassembly easier. Oops, 
I uh, put a little note at the top saying that uh, we should only charge this under observation because lithium polymer and lithium ion batteries are discharged too far down, get permanently damaged and um, resistance, incre resistance increases. Therefore, there's a higher risk of like shorting or uh, overheating. Um, there is an overheat sensor on this, but again, just to be doubly careful, I'm just going to keep eye on it when charging rather than leaving it unattended. So there you go. Now that I put the two earbuds in, you can see that it's charging, the display is working perfectly. And there is your disassembly and uh, reset instructions. Hopefully this helps someone and um, maybe this will add to the knowledge base because I think that this particular O'Keefe brand was just using a very generic, a very common type of like made in China earbuds.